Last Sunday was the first day back in our Wendy and Avrin Fogelman Religious School. And at the end of the first day in this sanctuary, in our communal assembly and service, Carly, or known to the kids, Miss Carly, um, asked what were some things that they hoped to get out of Sunday school this year. Some of the kids said they wanted to make new friends. Someone said they wanted to make a new menorah for Hanukkah. Someone said they wanted to make latkes. I'm with them. Um, But one kid said this. One kid said, world peace. Wow, world peace. (laughs) But really, really, what a Jewish idea. What a Jewish answer. World peace, curing cancer, ending child poverty, Jaw and the Grizzlies bringing home a title to Memphis. <laughs> Part of being Jewish is to dream big, to hope and to pray for a better world, a, a repaired world, maybe even a perfect world. And this week in our parasha, we get the Torah's vision of an ideal world, or at least of an ideal society that the Jewish people can build in the land of Israel. One aspect of this vision of this ideal society, Moses commands, Efes ki lo yiebecha evyon. There shall be no needy among you. When we create the perfect and just society, there should be no poor and no needy. And for those of us that live in Memphis, I know many of you are watching from around the country. But for those of us in Memphis, one of the poorest large cities in America, we know how much better our city would be and its inhabitants would would be if so many here no longer suffered from that terrible affliction of poverty. And yet, and yet with that lofty ideal set of no needy among us, Literally just a few verses later, just right down the page in the Torah, the Torah says, Ki lo yechdal evyon mi kerev ha'aretz, al kein anuhi mitzavachat lemor, patoach tiftach et yadecha leachicha, laani necha, ul evyi necha, the artsacha. For there will never cease to be needy, there will never cease to be poor people in your land which is why I command you, open your hand to the poor and the needy kin in your land. So why this seeming contradiction? What to make of it? If we are to create a society with no poor or no needy, why in literally the next breath does the Torah say in almost a fatalistic admission that there will always be needy in our land? My teacher and my friend, Rabbi Leon Morris, the president of the pluralistic yeshiva Pardes in Jerusalem, he teaches that the Torah is trying to cultivate in us a complex religious personality. Someone who can live simultaneously in the world of ideals as well as in the real world. That first verse, that there shall be no needy among you, is the guiding statement of someone who can dream big and keep their eyes on the prize, Rabbi Morris writes. And the second verse, there will never cease to be needy among you. That is the roadmap for making things happen under less than perfect conditions. And this is his key insight. That second verse teaches that real change in this world is incremental. When we're children, we see the world as so black and white. We see so many problems, climate change, wealth inequality, war, and we think to ourselves that when we grow up, we will change the world. And what a Jewish perspective that is. That is, of course, the perspective of that first verse, that there will be no needy among us. But as we get older we realize that things might be a little bit more complicated. Or maybe we get distracted with the need to get a job or to raise kids of our own, or we just want to enjoy this short time that we have in this life. 
But then comes along that first verse from our parasha. It grabs us by the shoulders and it shakes us out of our complacency. And it says, don't forget what it was like to dream big, to believe that each one of us has the power to change the world. And yet the problems of the world are daunting. And so Judaism, our very practical and realistic wisdom tradition, teaches balance. It teaches, in the words of Rabbi Morris, that real change in the world is incremental. So in our foundational ethical text, Pirkei Avot, the early rabbi, second century rabbi, Rabbi Tarfon taught, Lo alecha hamlachalig mor, the lo ataben horin levatel mimena. You are not required to complete the work, to complete the task of repairing the world, and yet neither are you free to neglect it. What does that mean? It's a 2,000-year-old text. To explain it, I'd like to, to share a story that I remember Rabbi Greenstein telling me in this temple when I was a kid here so many years ago. Some of you may know it. One morning, an old man was walking down a beach that was covered in dying starfish. The tide the night before had been especially strong, and thousands of starfish had washed up along the shore as far as the eye could see. And they were too far to make it back into the water on their own. And the man shook his head. This old man um, walking down the beach shook his head and said, what a shame it is that all of these starfish are going to die here on this beach. But then the man came upon a boy who was bending down and throwing the starfish back into the ocean as fast as he could. He was out of breath, and he'd clearly been at it for a long time. Son, the man said, you might as well quit. There are thousands of them all over the beach. There's no way you can make any sort of difference. But the boy didn't even pause in what he was doing. He just kept bending and throwing and bending and throwing. And as he did, he said to the man, but I can make a difference to this one and to this one and to this one. And the man thought, and he knew the boy was right. I'd like to quote, close with a quote from the late Bobby Kennedy when he was speaking to a group of young people. He wrote, some believe that there is nothing that one man or one woman can do against the enormous array of the world's ills, against misery, against ignorance or injustice and violence. Yet many of the world's great movements of thought and action have flowed from the work of a single person. A young monk began the Protestant Reformation. A young woman reclaimed the territory of France. And a 32-year-old Thomas Jefferson proclaimed that all men are created equal. These people have moved the world, and so can we all. Few have the greatness to bend history but each of us can work to change a small portion of the world's events. And in the total of all these acts will be the written history of a generation. Whether we, whether each one of us changes the history in the world, the history of the world, or whether we just save a few dying starfish, May we always remember what it felt like to care like a child, to feel so deeply, to believe that we can change the world. And may we, may each one of us, in the time that we have left, do our own part to make this world a better place. In the words of Rabbi Hillel, if not now, when? Kenihiratzon, may it be God's will.